This stuff is sponsored, Lilui Nishmas, Yechesko, Rev Tzvi Yehuda. We start with the Mishnah. The first two laws discuss the difference between a Shomer Chinam, an unpaid custodian, claiming the deposit was stolen or claiming that the deposit was lost. If his claim was that the deposit was lost, and that was refuted by the witnesses, claim that the custodian himself stole it, he pays only the principal. If his claim was that it was stolen, and that claim was refuted by the witnesses, he pays kefil. However, if he admits that he stole it, then in both cases he pays, as we've mentioned many times, the Karen, Chomesh, Ba'asham. The third law in the Mishnah discusses a son who stole from his father and the father died. The son admits to the theft, he has to pay the Karen, Chomesh, Ba'asham to his brothers or other heirs of his father if there are no other brothers. Now what's the reason for this? According to the Mishnah, although he is an heir of his father as well as his other brothers, he cannot keep the stolen money by way of his share of the inheritance. He is obligated to return what he stole. By taking his share after paying his brothers for what he stole, he would be retaining the theft. If he does not want to give up his share, then the Mishnah explains, or let's say, for example, he has no money to pay for the theft, he can borrow to pay, and his creditors can collect from his share of the estate. This does not negate his mitzvah of hashava, because he returned the stolen item from what he borrowed. As a result, his property becomes collateral to the loan, which is collected from his share of the estate. Now, the Gemara states, if he cannot find a relative, then he must give the money to tzedakah. He has to give the money to charity. Question is, why can't the thief, as an heir, forego the theft? It's now he's entitled to his father's estate, a share of his father's estate, and therefore, being an owner, he should be able to forego the theft. We learned in an earlier Mishnah that a victim can in fact forego a theft. The answer is, and the Gemara brings a few answers to this question, the first answer is Rabbi Yochanan. Our Mishnah follows the opinion of Rabbi Akiva. And the Mishnah that permits mechila for a theft is Rabbi Yossi Aglili. Their machlokas concerns one who stole from a convert, swore falsely, and the convert, instead of suing him, transformed the theft into a loan and then died. Rabbi Yossi Aglili holds that since the convert has no relatives, his estate is hefker. I mean, that's the din. The din is, is that the estate of a convert that has no relatives is that it's Hefker. Rav Yossi Aglili adds that in this case, since the thief b is now in possession of the money, he acquires it, even though initially it was money he stole. Once in possession, he forgoes th the theft to himself, so to speak. Rabbi Akiva disagrees. He holds that since the money was initially stolen, he cannot keep the money. It follows that Rav Yossi Aglili holds that it does not matter if the victim or even the thief forgoes the theft once the theft is his, either by way of an inheritance or by way of hefker. Whereas according to Rabbi Akiva, even the victim cannot forgo the theft so that the thief can keep the money. In addition, even though the Bryce says that the convert made the theft into a loan, According to Rabbi Yossi Aglili, it doesn't really matter. The second answer of the Gemara is Rabbi He holds that both Mishnayos are Rabbi Yossi Aglili, 
who distinguishes between the victim foregoing the theft and the thief. The case of the convert is unique because he transformed the theft into a loan. Since it is no longer stolen money, he can keep it after the convert's death. The third answer in the Gemara is Rava. He holds just the opposite of Rav Sheshis. Both Mishnayas are Rabbi Akiva. He distinguishes between the foregoing of the victim and the thief. The case of the convert, even where he changes the status of the money to a loan, according to Rabbi Akiva, does not undermine its stolen status. Even after the death of the convert, he cannot keep the money. According to Rabbi Yossi Aglili, he can forgo the theft when he possesses or inherits the stolen item. Question is, the Torah requires the thief to return the convert's stolen property to the Kohanim, serving in the temple. What are the circumstances of that law? It is where the thief admits to the theft after the death of the convert. The verse says Hashem acquires and transfers the rights to the Kohanim. However, if he admits when he is still alive, the debt is to the convert, which the thief acquires after his demise. What about a female convert whose property was stolen? Now she dies. Is restitution made to the Kohanim? Although the verse states, the me'ain lo ish goel, it is to exclude a minor. The thief does not have to investigate if he has relatives before paying the Kohanim. The extra term hamushav, returning, refers to a female convert, requiring the thief to pay her property to the Kohanim. Now what if it was a thief who stole from the convert? What if it was he was a Kohen? What if the thief who stole from the convert was a Kohen? The Gemara claims that he has to divide the convert's property with the other Kohanim of this Mishmar, in spite of the fact that he can bring his carbon Asham, and the one generally who brings the Asham gets the property of the convert. Normally the Kohanim share the bringing, but in this case he can bring it himself. The Gemara answers that the term la Kohen in reference to Sdeachuza teaches a Gezerah Shavah to our case. Just as in that case where an Israelite consecrates his ancestral land, he does not redeem it and a Kohen buys it from the temple treasury, he cannot claim at Yovel it remains his because he is in possession of it but must divide it with the other Kohanim of the Mishmar, the same is true in our case.